Uh, we are recording now. This is the diversity, equity, and inclusion meeting for July 21st, 2021. And um, we've got a few new people. At least I know Nico is new. I, Trisha, I haven't met before, but maybe it's just me. Yeah, I'm working on an internship with this chaos. Okay. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Uh, with the University of uh, Nebraska at Omaha, yeah. Okay. It's just me. So everyone knows Trisha, and I'm the one that hasn't met her. So, hey, Trisha, yes. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. Um, uh, and also uh, new is uh, Nico. Um, if, if you want to just take a, little, a minute to introduce yourself and. Good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm part of an open source program office at a grid operator in the Netherlands. And uh, electrical grid operator. Yeah, is, electrical yeah. grid gas, uh, <laughs> gas network as well. That's something we have here. Um, but we've only been around for like a year doing the OSPO. So we have metrics, but we don't do much with it. So I'm just diving, uh, submerging myself in chaos and uh, yeah, it's learning a lot. So welcome. Yeah, it's been nice having you around all the variety of different spots, Nico. Yeah, I'd met Nico an hour nice. ago at the evolution meeting, but um, I know he, I know he's new here, so I thought I'd uh, not assume everyone here was at evolution. Um, so on the agenda uh, today, I see a, a global inclusion event um, at the top of the agenda notes, and then some items from last week. I don't know what the global inclusion event is, but Perhaps whoever, whomever placed it there might uh, enlighten us. Yeah, um, me and Matt were working on the global inclusion event, and we were wondering if you guys could look at it because we put up the metric, and yeah, we just wanted to see if you guys could look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me pull up it, the pull request. Yeah, is it the oh. inclusive experience at an event? Is it the one down below? Or is it something? Uh, I think it's global inclusion of event. Oh, okay. Is yeah. it does it exist in the form of a pull request? Uh, I think so. I think yeah, I'm pulling it up. Um, we want okay. to get back around to this one. I'm not sure. Okay. I'll um. Bring it up. Okay. Pull request. Time inclusion. Okay. So I, global inclusion and time inclusion are synonymous. The name oh, has okay. changed recently. Okay. Okay. Um, and I don't know what the, I, I I have not seen the outdated flag on GitHub before, so I have no idea what that means. Um, I guess it may mean that the review is outdated because the changes requested have been made. I think so. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I have also never seen the squash and merge. So it's it's an interesting button. Oh, I see. I see squash and merge all the time. I've had that. I've had that button for a year, year and a half. Oh, okay. I the think one I saw was pull from upstream. I no longer have to de delete my forks. I'm excited about that one. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah, that's a great feature for that reason. Yeah. Yeah, I have not seen that. That's what I tell people if they need a new version of Augur is just delete your fork and re refork it because that's much easier than trying to merge a pull request into your into your fork. So. And I just go, why don't you switch to Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be great is if GitHub or GitLab purchased Garrett and actually created a consistent platform for it. Um, we're working with, uh, I'll just, an aside, we're working with Garrett uh, right now with Augur and every implementation is nominally different depending on the version. So unlike GitLab or GitHub, you can't count on all the things being there in each instance. Um, so it makes it challenging for tool builders, but uh, what do we do? What's the, do we have a policy about the uh, DCO being missing? Oh, it's going now. It's green if you refresh. Okay. They can uh, they can add the the DCO to a comment as well. Oh. So and if, if they add the DCO to the comment, uh, you can just go in and change the. Uh, you can override the DCO. 
Yeah, I've I've got privileges on the org to override the DCO, but I, I always ask uh, working group by working group what the practice is. Okay, so is this um, in a... Can you this, click is, that? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, click on yeah. that. So I guess the question is, is this in a, a shape of, I see there's <sighs> headings that have nothing under them. And so my only question is, do we want those headings deleted because, <clears throat> because they aren't being used or is there content that needs to be added? Yeah, I think I wasn't, um, I, I had said to remove the optional headers, but I think I made the mistake of saying remove the optional and then, um, sorry about that. So the headers, yeah, those headers have to go. I can get rid of them right now. Okay. Uh, but my question is, um, we have to, um, so I, I'm wondering what the process is once, since this, I don't know if it's documented so anywhere, how I, we go from pull requests to, yeah. It's in the it's in the handbook. So what we would do, um, and Kevin Lombard has been has been through this with me enough now that I remember it. We need to put a preliminary release uh, heading on it because it's it's coming as a mid release metric. I, I believe that's the intention here. And then there's a we open an issue for comments and send an email to the community asking for feedback on that issue. And I can actually um, go find. We have a we have an example in um, evolution uh, that we just did. Of course, evolution is way down my list. Jeez, good God, very far. Updated fourteen days ago. We're a very active group. And so, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Um, Is that the thing Kevin just put in chat? I think he just put it in. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that because me fumbling around the web browser is not getting us anywhere. Yep, sorry, I was I was telling you you didn't need to go look for that. Uh, however, I was muted, so so I just sat there watching uh, you go look for it. Well, thank you. Uh, so this is the handbook. I see. Uh, yeah, I linked to the handbook. Kevin, right above that, had listed. Oh, had okay. Listed. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, no, no. Okay, it's no problem. I, it's oh, we get there. Me being oh. dumb more than uh, anything else. So as so, that as that message implies, by the way you also have to create a comment issue and include the link to the comment issue in the, in the metric. Okay. So, so, so when you do the, when you do the pull request uh, to your working group for this metric, that starts the process of moving the metric into the, uh, the uh, review, the continuous review cycle. I'll make this easy for Matt. Um, and then also, oops, I hit caps lock, didn't mean to do that. Also, please open a corresponding issue and link that. And, there's, and there is a, and there is a tag that you want to put on that issue as well. Okay. And that tag is the signal for us to move the, the metric to the, uh, to the website after it's been pulled. Okay, so we'll, we'll have a little more work to do. We have another pull request along with this one. What's the so tag, we'll, Kevin? We'll, Sorry to interrupt, Matt. Oh, I believe it's community review uh, or something like review. that. Yeah, I mean, you can. Uh, I can, I'll find it. Yeah, okay. I believe I believe labels are yeah. common. Uh, metrics, metrics release can't metrics release. candidate release, yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, so. So um, we have two that we're going to we're going to have to clean up uh, a little bit here, and then um, we'll have those for ne ready for next week. Okay. And you know, if you if you are working in the background during this meeting and tell us it's ready today, I, we can deal okay. with it as well. Like I, I've done that before. It's not required, but I'm. We will attend to it if you do that, but at the end of the meeting. Uh, so I, I think the metric looks good. I was looking at the at the files changed. Mm -hmm. Click on that, John. Uh, yes. So I, I think the metric looks good. Just have to remove those row 20, 21. Yep. Or 22, 24. Yeah, and I think Matt said that he was yeah. going to do that. And then, yeah. And then there might just be some 
editorial things, but I think all of those can be solved in the community review period. Like we don't okay. know. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that doesn't hold us up. No, we can merge. Then, yeah, no, it shouldn't hold us up. Cool. All right, awesome. So and I just merged. All right. Oh, did Matt, Matt, did you do the, did you get rid of those rows? Uh, I, um, this is for Trisha. I'll have to, I have to open a pull request to your version of it. And then um, I'll, I'll work with you on getting that resolved and also fixing the other one, other pull requests as well. Trisha, you could just remove them too and just push Yeah, them. that works. Whoa. Uh, you, Trisha, can you just remove those rows? Can you repeat that again? Yeah, could you remove on your on your version? Could you remove rows? I think it's 20, um, 20, yeah. 20 22, and 24. Mm -hmm. The headers, the filters header, the visualizations header, and the tools providing the metric header. Yeah. yeah, I could do that. Just release them and push that, and then we'll be good to merge. Yeah, and add the heading under time under the name of the uh, metric. I'll There's... create the metric. I'll create the issue, and then I'll add the heading on that if that's fine. Yeah, that, that works for me. I mean, you could do a separate pull request to change this. I think uh, Sean had asked early on, I believe. Are we are we sure there's no content that we want to add into those headers? Below those headers. Mm -hmm. The fil the filters, visualizations, and tools providing the yeah. metrics. I think the implicit answer from the discussion was no, but. We went through and tried to find anything that would be relevant to those. And there was not necessarily anything that we could add that would be new. So as, so then my question is for then Matt Cantu. Matt, do you, as this kind of moves through the process now of joining the list of metrics, is this is the intention to now include this as part of the badging process? Definitely. This is um, going to go directly into so the badging process. I'll talk about this a little bit later too, but we're looking at doing a badging freeze at about September 5th. So mm -hmm. like five days after the metrics release. Yeah, and then uh, having our new badging release V three start uh, at the end of September. Okay, cool. If you, yeah, that'd be cool if you talk about that later too. Um, Nico, basically these these metrics in in DEI. Um, one of the challenges that we've had is it's you you can't often use software for a lot of these metrics, and so we developed a the chaos DEI event badging program. So an event can request a, a badge based on their attention to particular metrics. So if, for example, their attention to being family friendly or their attention to providing diversity access tickets. And so there's a whole process by which, and you may be familiar with this, there's a whole process by which events go through a human review with respect to attending to particular metrics. and. We've been looking at, at adding additional metrics to the review process just to continue to have the event organizers reflect on appropriate DEI related issues with respect to their events. And this would be a new metric to add to this process. So I have a question on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm a green or red colorblind. Um, so I've just from my personal experience, things like are the slides legible? Uh, how about the website? I noticed some things in, in GitHub, but say I want to add an issue. Um, where sh or come up with a new initiative for a metric? Should yeah. I add it on the agenda or create a, an issue for it? Yeah, so the best you, entry point. Yeah, so I think for the, you added, so there was a comment you had for the value working group with the, I think, yeah. you know, so that was awesome. I love that. Um, so I, the process would be go to the respective working groups um, repository and then just add an issue and tag it as a new metric idea. And then right. we, can, we can bring it up in the, the meeting. The, the good news for you is that both Grimoire Lab and Augur use colorblind uh, 
uh, templates that are designed for colorblind people to be able to interpret them. Um, a, lesson I, a lesson I personally learned when I turned in my dissertation with nice colored graphics and learned my advisor was colorblind. <laughs> yeah. I just sent an email to LFX Insights for uh, <laughs> such a reason. So <laughs> thanks, you're going to do a good job. Yeah. So then in this process, Nico, so like if, if attention to colorblindness was a metric that moves through, I think that's a very nice candidate. We'd, um, we'd move it through and then the process for connecting it with the DEI badging program would be as part of that review, there would simply be a conversation as to how the event organizers are attending to colorblindness. Are they reaching out to their submitters to, to think about colorblindness, right? So you know it's it's not like um it's something that we can necessarily measure but we just like to have that conversation with event organizers to kind of move it to um to a point where they think about that when they're putting together their events yeah clear yeah excellent um also yeah. it looks like time inclusion the pull request is ready to merge it's got a corresponding issue as well excellent thank you matt so back to the colorblindness question, is there a metric about that or does there need to be no. one? No. So I think Nico would open an issue. Okay. Yeah, I will. I, I noticed a couple about the chaos website itself, but not a general uh, metric. No, I'll add one more thing in here too, Nico. So we also... The metric is merged. Um, hold on just a second. We... So we'll, we should update our spreadsheet too. So I don't know if you've seen this. Um, I'm gonna put it in the chat. So this is our spreadsheet where we track all of our metrics as well. So these are, you'll see in some of the rows, like what Sean is showing, like row 32, technical jargon. Like, it's something that somebody has brought up. We just haven't taken the time to build a metric out for it yet and think through it. So, you know, if you include colorblindness, it would be something that we would add here as well. Yeah. I've, I've seen this spreadsheet a lot. And oh, you I have? Okay, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. It gives it a good overview. Hopefully, hopefully I explained it the same I mean, way people were explaining it. <laughs> probably Nico. better. Uh, Nico, if you, if you have uh, specific examples you saw on the chaos website, uh, I would really appreciate it if you could open an issue so that I can, I can take care of that. And then I, I also no, want to- uh, um, Should we just add it right now? Yeah, if they, if they exist, or you can just yeah, informally let me know what they are and I'll take No, no, I mean, the, I think the issue on the website uh, repo is a really good idea because that helps us track that. I'm just asking if we should just add colorblindness as a considering metric while we're here. Yeah, maybe um, uh, you misunderstood my words about the website. I noticed that probably there were closed issues. There were a couple of issues in this working group GitHub repository related to the website of Chaos. Maybe they're addressed already, I'm not sure. Um, but it's not something um, that I noticed at least. So I don't okay. have a particular issue about the current state of the website. Okay, I believe I believe we are using a uh, a colorblind template, and as uh, most of the visualize the visualizations provided by Augur and Grimoire Lab all all come in uh, colorblind safe as well. Uh, if you do notice an issue, uh, please let us know. Uh, and we are uh, we are actually doing uh, an accessibility audit on the website following the migration. So if there are issues there, we're hoping to catch it as well. But I, I apologize if I misunderstood. No problem. Yeah, it's so good. They're both closed, so that's good. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you, Trisha, and thank you, Matt, for, for your work on this. Yeah, no, it's great to see a metric get put out there to be reviewed in the middle of a meeting. That is a win, in my humble opinion. Um, so the next, so I, uh, in, this, in the context of this uh, group, I believe that the next thing on the agenda 
And is the is the from last week something that we want to leave in the minutes, or should I take that out and just make those agenda items? I haven't seen this practice in other groups, so I'm just asking. Like, um, they can just be agenda items, I think. Okay. All right. So the next up, uh, next up is psychological safety. And that's the one I've been <clears throat> working on, and I did clean it up a little. Um, there's still a few kind of trailing comments that I left open. Um, one in particular uh, was from Lawrence on down. I think he wanted to provide some feedback, but I think um, maybe last time we didn't accept or, or I'm not sure really what happened. I don't, I don't remember that, but um, yeah, I, I hope that he comes back and, and offers his feedback. So I wanted to leave it open a little bit longer to give Lawrence a chance to okay. provide that feedback. Um, and then, you know, but we can certainly like look at it if we all, if we want to, or we can wait, whatever. Uh, usually if I tag someone, I guess you can't tag him. I don't know why. Yeah. I was hoping it would notify him. There's a reply, but yeah. Yeah. Usually um, like if I tag someone. Yeah. Huh. I don't know why that feature is not working right now. That's interesting. I can tag him. You can? Okay, go ahead and do that. I'm not quite, maybe it's that I'm the chaos community, I guess, on this particular Google Doc. I have no idea how my browser decides who I am on different Google Docs. <laughs> Same. I just realized I'm also chaos community, so <laughs> super confusing. I'm going to switch. Okay. Yeah. All right. So someone will take Lawrence and uh, we'll leave this open for comments, I think is what I'm hearing. Uh, Should we take a look uh, at it? Yeah, we can. Um, yeah, absolutely. Take like five minutes or something. Yeah, let, uh, let's take five minutes and look at this. Do you want me to pause the recording we, while we do this or, or just? To... Yeah, I've always, I, I always say yes. And then we always have a really good conversation while the recording. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, stopped, I've stopped pausing in other working groups for that exact reason. Um, so I'm supposed to fast forward through these five minutes. Then yeah, can yeah. Do. Can you I can ask guys... a question real quick about this? Yes. So what is the... What is the purpose of the survey in data collection strategies? So are, are we just trying to provide an example of how something can be done? Or are we trying to create the definitive tool for measuring this psychological safety? Is it prescriptive or suggestive, I think, is what you're asking. And should we adjust the language around it to make that distinction? I think it, what's the intent? I, I, does anyone know? I would say definitely suggestions. Um, that seems to be how, you know, usually how we roll does, with these. It does say sample. So from a, yeah, from a, from a method standpoint, this survey is, is getting pretty in depth. Uh, so how, how complete does the survey, do we want the survey to be? I would say that the more uh, the more specific this survey is, the more it implies that this is the tool or the method we've created to measure this this metric. So it becomes uh, less a suggestion and more a like this is the way you should do it. Does, so, that, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. My my suggestion to your question is that I've underscored and bolded the word candidate <laughs> survey questions because I think it's I think it's super helpful to have this kind of detail so that somebody knows somebody has a place to start right it's easier to have a place like this to start than it is to invent your own survey and I suspect anyone that actually deployed a survey would start here and modify to the context that they're sending the survey out in I, I agree that the the surveys are are very useful to have and we should include them I'm just uh I'm just uncertain, uh, as I said, I was, I'm just uncertain about the intent uh, and the message that we would be sending to 
uh, individuals who are looking at the metrics. So if we, yeah, if we could iron out the language around that, it might be helpful. I'm interpreting the intent based on the use of the word sample as uh, suggestive rather than prescriptive. And I suggested a change of just, you know, candidate survey questions include uh, that's a, and then putting the bolding and underscoring in there to I don't know, make it super clear that this is not prescriptive. Or at least I think bolding and underlining makes things super clear, although I've also been told that's lazy writing. What, what do folks think oh, in terms of how to present this as a not prescriptive list? I mean, I guess I, we've never been prescriptive. I, even when I read sample questions include, I didn't, mm -hmm. that is, this is the, yeah. the that you must use. Yeah. I just, I mean. I confess I did have to go look at the heading and read the word sample before I realized it was suggestive and not prescriptive, which, and so maybe underlining and bolding simply sample is, is sufficient. Yeah. I, I think we do have a bit of a tendency to treat some of these metrics as methods rather than uh, rather than uh, metric uh, descriptions or definitions. So we, uh, we do have a bit of a tendency to do that. We've, we've caught it in the past and kind of pushed back against it with, with some of the metrics. The, the, social, uh, the social listening metric was one that was, it was, uh, you know, we wrote it as a method. And then at a later date, we went back and, and edited it to uh, remove a lot of the method from it. Uh, so I, I do think that's a, a tendency we have a little bit with our, with yeah. our metrics. I, I, I'll say Can that. I that particular, yes. Just thinking, I, I'm actually, I, mean, I think I see where, where Kevin's coming from on this too. And I was thinking that, well, well, one of the things that we, in terms of what language we use or not, I don't think that it will stop at the end of the day, people coming to a metric that we publish and define and just copy pasting everything we say making no changes and using it somewhere else. That's cool if it's helpful and that's great, but I see there's this piece where I don't know how often we regularly revisit these kinds of things in the metric. And I think this is where maybe I'm, I'm kind of reading Kevin that there's kind of a commitment that things will change and especially around diversity, equity and inclusion, it can be tough. Like maybe it, it's not a good idea to put this in a metric definition as a static unchanging piece, but I put in the chat on Zoom just like we did with the communication inclusivity metric where we did a blog post about here's the different chat platforms because that stuff changes all the time. Maybe we could do something like that with this since we have some good work here and it would kind of be a shame to throw it all out, but maybe a blog post with a clear date timestamp would be a better place to put it. Does that make sense? It does. Would we reference that blog post in the metric? Then? Yeah, that's what we did oh, with okay. the communication inclusivity. Like we put it down as a as a reference piece. Oh, I mean, I I think um, I I have no I have no objection to that. Um, it, it that that makes some sense. Uh, it enables it, it. I think one thing it does is as new concerns about areas for psychological safety emerge, uh, it puts us in a position where we don't have to modify this metric. So it, it makes the metric itself uh, more uh, amenable to the evolution of what psychological safety is defined as. Um, so you don't have to come back and add sample questions or feel the need to do that. Uh, so we would just, might, oh, sorry, keep going, Sean. Sorry. No, it might make it more maintainable. So is the recommendation then to just kind of chop this whole survey thing out and then make that piece the blog post or? I think we would use, yeah, we'd probably chop it out and use this survey in the blog post and we'd add, in its place, we'd add more generalized language uh, for, for guidance for data strategies. And, and maybe this survey, this survey is less a data strategy and it's more a, a tool similar to Augur that we're linking out to, right? So it's like Augur or More Lab, those are those are tools that we use. And the this, this survey is a tool as well. So we, we treat it more as a 
a tool rather than a, a data collection strategy. I mean, I'll say I like the questions in the metric personally, but I may not, that may not be where we land. Um, in some of the other DEI metrics, we do provide sample questions that people can ask. Um, I, I mean, so personally, I like it. I don't see this mm -hmm. as that similar to the social. Um, the yeah, social listening was a, a that was gigantic. Different. Like this was the most epic, long, complex metric in the history of chaos. And it, and it was very method. I agree with that. I just, I don't know that providing some sample questions is necessarily a strict method. And I don't, I don't think so either. I'm, I'm, uh, I am, I don't have a lot of issues with uh, having a survey in the document as an example. Uh, I do think, uh, I think Justin's point is valid as well. Uh, uh, but yeah, and my original comment was is just mostly about changing the language in it to make to make to make it clear that this is an example of a survey that could be used. So um, I see this as, as similar to the project burnout metric, where we are just trying to get a feel for how people feel, uh, you know, a pulse of how they're feeling. And so, like in the um, burnout metric. We say the following is a way to better assess the well being of open source project contributors and maintainers through a useful set of questions that can be asked regarding the well being of community members. And then we go and we um, list some questions. So maybe we could put something like that. I can steal it from burnout. Let me just copy and paste it here. Yeah, theft is welcome in, the, in this context. <laughs> Repurposing. Uh, Repurposing, right. <laughs> Right, that, that, that was too too negatively valenced a term. I, <laughs> you know, I don't feel strongly either way, but I do, if I think of it, if I put on my metric consumer hat, I know more what to do with this metric if the questions are in it and only having to click one place, I think is helpful. Um, you know, I think it makes the metric easier to consume if the questions remain. Because then I, I can my concern about including it only as a reference, or even if even if we refer to the reference in the narrative, is that people won't make that next click. You know, it's um, it's like it's it's like approving payroll. Like the number of times I the number of times I have to click something in PeopleSoft to get to approve my employees' payroll is like seven or eight, and I just I hate it when I have to just like make so many clicks to just do one thing. Um, so I'm I'm always in favor of fewer clicks for the psychological well-being of all people. <laughs> uh, now I'm watching Elizabeth trying to spell psychological, <laughs> which I confess I'm not sure I can spell correctly without the aid of a spell checker. <laughs> I'm so happy these these meetings are recorded. So that's yeah. I mean that, that it's one of those. It is one of those words that I am glad that the spell checkers exist everywhere now. And no, I can't figure out how to change that format. I, I tried, <laughs> I tried moving it to normal text. I tried just the little uh -oh. T with the slash of taking out all of the format. Nothing is working. So someone smarter than me can figure that out. Well, I know a trick. This little paint roller, if you highlight the way that you want it to be, and then I think you fixed. Somebody fixed it, right? It just clicked with the slash through it. I don't know why yours didn't work. That's okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad it works for someone. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I think we're landing on leaving the survey in the in the metric, leaving the sample survey in the metric. Or the sample it's only five questions too. Yeah. I am a little on the if you go down to the bottom of, you know, we don't have page numbers, but um, yeah, like uh, where it says harass, right, right, right there. Stop. Okay. So I got a little confused through this section. So I we think... have the, have we have above it we have C, which is have you ever experienced any of the following behaviors? Mm -hmm. No. And then 
yes, there's a formatting inconsistency here that's a little bit annoying because then there's a D that follows it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is this is this top part like um is it like how to construct a like a, a table by which you would capture the responses? Honestly, what I, my plan was is to see how it looked in Markdown and to make it look right in Markdown. But we can just change it now, and then I can redo it in Markdown because it's super does, confusing. Does this D right here actually refer to the items above it, and then this is the response piece right there? So this response measure is for each of the nine items above. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's really hard to see that in this Google Doc. So my hope yeah. was like once it's in Markdown, it will be a little clearer. But that yeah. might not be. All right. I think um, I think what I'll I'll just make a comment that uh, when when we move this to Markdown, it will be clear that the response grid under D is for each of those items. By the way, when when these metrics get uh, as part of the, uh, the metrics release process right now, uh, uh, tables are not uh, displaying properly when we convert this to PDF. So our, the, the, current, uh, the current thought uh, from the, uh, the Mars project team uh, is uh, we would like to provide guidance to the working groups to preferably not use markdown tables. Is the uh, is the is this a I see I suspect this is a function of the particular PDF markdown to PDF converter that we're using, which is, is they've it, tried uh, they've tried multiple ways to resolve the issue. Is it just uh, pandoc? Is it a pandoc thing or yeah they're or, using, yeah they're using pandoc. Okay, yeah pandoc's imperfect that's for sure. Better than nothing, uh, but sometimes more annoying than nothing. So the, the guidance that we're providing currently is to avoid GitHub markdown tables. Um, if you need to include a table in a metric, perhaps you can build that markdown table in a separate document and include it as an image. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll just add a comment to that. I can probably rework it so that it does not look like a table. I think we can. I was just thinking that just write them yeah. as questions like the way that ABC are kind of written. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think the metric reads really nicely. I do too. I think it's just, I think at this point we're just like, it's just structural things, but content wise, I think it reads real well. Yeah, and, and all the all the content things I think are resolved in the transference or the, the movement of this into Markdown um, as a pull request. So cool. I think I think what I'm hearing is that this is good to go. And we need someone to take an action item of putting it in Markdown and creating a pull request. Do that. All right. Could we remove those last two optional headers? Uh, I'll, I'll just delete them. No. Okay. So I know we have other metrics here too, but I know Matt, you had some update on the badging. Is that right? So I'd like to hear how that, if you have updates or things you want to talk about. Yeah. I can always give an update on badging. Um, so we are working on, <clears throat> like, like I said before, we're going to be doing a badging freeze on the 5th of September. So we'll have a few busy days to get everything updated from the final version of every metric. Uh, and get that checklist and make it a little more difficult. One of our big goals is to make it more difficult to get a gold badge because every badge we've given out so far has been a gold badge. So we want to make it a little harder. Um, uh, we've had people who have been a lot more attentive to their DNI than we thought we would. 
the DEI. Um, so that's actually a good problem to have. Um, something I wanted to talk about. Um, also, we've had a lot of return visitors, which is really cool. A lot of people from the LF actually uh, that will come back a few times and, and um, put multiple events up. We had one time where we had like 12 events at once <laughs> with um, with uh, KubeCon, CloudNativeCon and all the co-located events. So um, what I wanna talk about with for today with the group is um, thanking the badging reviewers. Uh, I think I played ping pong between meetings a few times about um, how we want to get like a, like a free commerce site set up or something like that, that we can send things out to badging reviewers and uh, GDPR compliantly um, collect their information to send things out. But I've kind of gotten like a lot of, um, you know, we need to do this and this and this, but I don't know how to do that. Mostly talking to the LF about how to set that up. Um, so I'd like to try and get that going because so far the, the reviewers, but I think the most thanks they've got is a thanks for me in, in an email and stuff like that. But I'd like to do something tangible um, and, and our whole group would like to do something tangible. So I'd like to bring that up. Okay, so I'm trying to think of who, so, they, so you want a hand trying to connect with somebody at the LF? Yeah, because I know I know we wanted to set up, and we had some people doing research on different um, e-commerce sites we could use. Uh, I think one of the examples was Zazzle, but um, something that we could use to just like use it as kind of a shell e-commerce site where we could just say this is zero dollars. Put in your information. Go ahead and choose your um, yeah. just hey, how you want it shipped. That kind of do, thing. Do, do you mean e-commerce or free commerce? I heard free. It's commerce. like free commerce with the big E at the end of the hmm. at, at the free because it's it's e-commerce, but it's everything's free because you're just ordering swag from it. Okay, so it's like free. Is it like that? Yeah, free. like that. That's okay. the term I heard before. But okay, all right. I just hadn't heard that before. So um, one thing you could do, Matt, and what I do with the RDO contributors is we do have stuff in Red Hat's Cool Stuff Store if someone wants to buy something. But then I have a list of codes that I hand out. So that's how I'm controlling what okay. people are buying or what I'm giving to my contributors. That's fair. Um, and I don't think Chaos is necessarily set up to do a store. What we I think the problem for us is the infrastructure and, and making sure we're compliant with the LF when we do that. I wonder how hard it would be to set up a store. Well, but even your Zazzle account is a store. If you can have codes yeah. to hand out to people that they put in at the time they're purchasing is what I'm getting at. Um, fair. Because people act. may want to wear a Chaos shirt to Chaos Con. Just saying. Um, you know, so that might also be something that if other groups wanted to do it to thank their contributors, we've got it in one place and it's not just for the badging program. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like it. That. Would, uh, it would actually be fairly easy to add an e-commerce store to the website. I mean, it's, it's as simple as adding a plugin. So that when you say adding an e-commerce store, is it like a plugin to oh, Zazzle? Is that probably? I'm sure there is one. There's a plugin for everything on WordPress. <laughs> I can probably launch a rocket. Or even if a, it's just a, a link over to Zazzle. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, that would give you know people who want to buy stuff that gives us a little income that we can spend on things like ChaosCon. Yeah, that's, I like that idea mm -hmm. a lot. And by the yeah. way, um, with the recommendations, Emily came up with a set of recommendations from uh, IAAASA Open. And um, she has a few different sites she wanted us to try out. I just haven't been able to get it going yet. Try out for this kind of thing? Yeah, she has a list of sites that might be good that they've tried on their on their platform as well. Can you, Matt, can you maybe me and Elizabeth connect? Because like, if you have some ideas, I still have, we have funds that we can use for marketing. You know what I mean? And I can get those applied. And it would really be great to kind of centralize things. So I, yeah. I was going to say, if, if we want to put this on the website, I can I can take the lead on that. Okay. Yeah, so maybe you should be part of that conversation too, Kevin. Feel free to hit me up because I've gone through this before with RDO okay. with not one store, but two stores. Yeah, no, I Thank love you. This. And who is, I'm sorry, who is speaking? Because when I'm sharing, I can't see Amy. names. Okay. I was eating, so my camera is off. <laughs> no, well, and when I'm sharing something, I don't see anybody. Ah. But. Um, 
All right, cool. And I need to, this is like, I need to get some, I need to order things for ChaosCon anyway. So this can all kind of happen yep. together all at once. Oh, um, did Amy yeah. really you needed a t-shirt? What? Were you implying that you needed a chaos t-shirt? I think she I'm said just it. saying that if we had something, I'd probably wear it around with, you know, we're trying to get more speakers for OpenStack from the engineers and mm -hmm. we're in the process of doing, we can't use the word ambassador, but basically an ambassador type program. And, you know, we have different, we're thinking of different badge levels based on, you know, what you contribute and with the idea being that, you know, if you do something really great, you're walking around in a backpack so that people could know to come up to you. So yeah. I think it's really important that people in the community are identifiable so you can talk to them at events. So. Um, side note, I put in the chat that we have a bunch of, we have a few sticker mock-ups for the um, badging initiative. And then it might be DEI related as well if, if they're the top two. Um, that, that sounds yeah, and I know the um, leaderboard talk got, got in as well. I don't know who all's on that panel with George and I, but that one got in. So we definitely have some talks that'll be during the week and not just ChaosCon. Uh, real quick, I had a question about a comment that Matt had made earlier. So the, the criteria for badging is changing. Uh, how, are, how are you planning on handling the kind of the, the, the switch, right? So projects that were gold prior, are they, or not projects, but uh, events that were gold prior, are you reevaluating them? Are they? So everything's still gonna have its like, one year like waiting period before the badge is invalid again and also um we're going to do it gradually not all in one release uh and we're going to it's going to um just kind of slowly become more difficult we wanted to start the process sooner rather than later though i think it comes as a combination of adding more metrics that uh things have things that have to be met for a badge and also making it making the percentage required for getting a whatever tier of badge we're going to be shifting that up as we go so how do you how do you address the how do you address the fact that a gold badge has a different value depending on when it's done is there could, a is there a could. statement or uh... um, we're tying everything in with the release i mean it's definitely release dependent uh, and, and like a v, uh, uh, hopefully um, people will still want to get a V3 or a V4 badge, um, even though it might be more difficult. Uh, and I'll, as facilitator, note that we are at time. Um, I, I did throw something into the text at the bottom. I just wanted to mention um, on Augur, we recently added something called ProseBot, which uh, checks all the language in uh, readable documentation for for words that are potentially non-inclusive that, that you might not think of. Uh, the example that we got flagged for recently was the use of grandfathered, um, which has a certain connotations that I, I personally did not realize were problematic in uh, the US English language. So <clears throat> I just wanted to suggest to this group, this might be a bot that is worthwhile, including since most of what we produce is words. <clears throat> Can you put that on next? Is, did you put that on next week's agenda? I, I, I added it. I'll put it on next week's agenda too. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, yeah. Is the, the comment that I made, is that something that we need to, do we need to continue talking about that as well? Or is that just not an issue? Probably. Can you remind think, me what? I mean, we can talk about it next week, but I'll just say, I don't think we can devalue any work that has been done prior to achieve a gold badge. So we certainly can't go back and say you're now silver. But if you're right. if you're if you're moving the goalposts or if there's with uh, you know or uh, if there's you know it's it's almost a, a type of inflation around uh, you know what a what a gold badge is. I think we we have to address that in some fashion, right? Because uh, I don't think a so. gold badge from last year is not the equivalent to a gold badge from this year. Oh, but, definitely. Uh, I'm going to be know, putting the, that in the value is changing. Story. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think if I think it's okay to change the bar, because, especially because these are events. Like the the CNCF's badging program is badging a project, right? And so that's durable over time. Uh, in the case of an event, the events in the past. So if we change the goalposts, I don't know that it is. I mean, I guess we probably should say something, but I don't think it's a giant big deal. I, I think it's okay to change it. I just think we need to be transparent about it and make sure that there is some sort of documentation about what that what those changes are, I suppose, is what I'm saying. Absolutely. Okay. I appreciate that, Kevin. I'm, um, I'm adding that as an agenda item um, for next week. And to be honest, I honest, being that most of our stuff has been Linux Foundation, I think by the time they do their second, we're going to be back to all gold because they figure out what we're asking for and they apply it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. that, that's the whole honesty of it. I think out of all the badging programs we did, 90% were Linux Foundation. So, and and it's the same and person applying. So they're just going to improve and get back to us having mainly gold level. Yeah, and there's something to be said there too, right? Because there is a, there's a continual progression that maybe things are getting better and better and how can we how can we address that and and really maybe you know make a point that that's a good thing yes it is i definitely um, think it is if we just view gold as an equal value every every time without that uh that that statement uh we lose that yeah that's what i liked about the suggestion from matt with the versioning mm -hmm. oh yeah make it explicit in the badge itself yeah Right on. All right. Well, I thank you all for participating. Matt will be our Matt Cantu will be our facilitator next time. Um, and or Matt Snell as he's listed on the screen here, but his name I know, actually. I know. He keeps changing it and then changes <laughs> back. Well, he's got a lot of aliases. He's like the Jason Bourne of the Chaos Project. You know, you just never know where he's gonna be. <laughs> Congratulations on your talk, Ruth. I just want to get that in real quick. Yeah. And and Treadstone and Blackbriar as well. So <laughs> bye everybody. Bye. <laughs>